I grew up in Stockholm, Sweden. My grandma used to uh, run a nightclub in the 70s. So she always had these massive vinyl collections and music collections in general, cassette. As a kid, you grow up and you're curious, obviously, about what's making noise. So you just start digging into it. With the years, I kind of understood it more and more. And then I got into DJing uh, when I was around 12. A lot of hip hop and breaks and beats, and then uh, got into scratching, and then slowly merged over into electronic music. And then about 1996, when I heard that Daft Punk homework, I was sold. That was like that moment in my life where it was game over. What changed my whole life was Daft Punk, Prodigy, Chemical Brothers, Moby, Fatboy Slim, Kraftwerk, Pink Floyd. I mean, the list goes on. I've always been so open minded when it comes to music that I kind of listen to everything. This you have to have. These are all the studio albums. This is uh, ABBA. Look at this, how beautiful it is. Here's my daughter's Lady Gaga. You can see there's some incredible records. XX, a lot of ear. Moby albums, obviously it's really important. One of my favorite artists of all time, Pink. Nine Inch Nails, Bob James, Kraftwerk. M83, Massive Attack, JC. Another artist that I grew up listening to, that I've always looked up to. The hip-hop scene uh, grew up with listening to Gangstar and Jay-Z and Nas. There was always a message, there was always some powerful meaning behind every lyric or every song. It said something. It was either politics or poverty or classism. It had a message and I think that was really important at the time. I didn't grow up having an instrument. I, I only had my turntables. By the age of maybe 18, I already had 150 releases. I was always that kid that just couldn't get enough of the studio. My expression was always playing music and cutting music and, and samples, redoing what people have done. And that's how I got into it. it. It became a technical standpoint. And then obviously later on, the computer became my instrument. And I think that changed the world because all of a sudden you could create music without being a musician, which was pretty incredible. Now I've learned how to play guitar and bass and you know piano and you write music differently and I can express myself, but that's, it's taken me 20 years. Synths are my all-time thing and I, I like to process synths. I like guitar amps and bass amps and I like to be a little bit of a professor when it comes to the sounds. I'm not a bass player, you know, I just like to make it sound really crazy. My thing is the chain of the processing is, is what's important for me. It's how you make a clean synth line sound like a barking dog. You know? There's something with analog that I feel is more alive, you know, nothing is programmed. All the uh, chorus effects and the release and everything is so random somehow that it's kind of creates this atmosphere that I really like. It's a pleasure writing music with stuff that just happens. Sometimes it's annoying because you just want to like throw it out the window, but at the same time it has those moments that are unreplaceable. And then all of a sudden, it becomes an organ. You hear that? How cool is that? We're in church. It's like being a chef, you know, you try and, and you try and try different things and sometimes you get that magic spice that you want to use on your, or on your meat or your pasta or whatever. I have a style that I like, I like big choruses or I like a specific way people make music and, and that kind of translates maybe into a successful record, but that's not the purpose, you know. The process, uh, it usually starts with just a simple melody and then I kind of build around that. I think the drums are usually the last piece of the puzzle. I always start with creating the most epic part of the song, and then I kind of strip it down from there to kind of arrange it a little bit. And then after that, I start adding stuff to it. And then I add too much, and then I start removing stuff on stage. It's just different because I'm used to a different dynamic in the show and, and you have th these moments that you just have to figure out how you translate to a crowd. I've never been a live performance musician so I'm kind of obsessed by that explosiveness. Thank you guys for stopping by. It was nice to have you here but I actually got really inspired now so I gotta get to work so 
<laughs> you gotta leave. Thank you. Poking fun at something, uh, to be mean just for the sake of poking fun at it without digging beneath it. I wish I could tell my younger self for an hour a day, stop thinking about the boy. I would try to slap the obsession out of myself. I really, really love science. I'm very passionate.